Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to share with you some wonders in today's Thousand Little Wonders and Conservancy Crusaders. But the first thing I wanted to ask you guys was, where do you live? And I want you to think about the place that you live. And I bet most of you live in Kakana. And Kakana is where you eat, where you have water, and also I'm sure where you have shelter or your house. And so essentially, Kakana is our habitat. And a habitat is just a really fancy word for where animals live. But a good way to think about a habitat is a neighborhood. And in your neighborhood, there are a bunch of different people that live together. And so in a habitat in nature, that's where a lot of different animals have their homes. And so today, we are gonna talk about animal homes and the different ways animals can make their homes and the different ways that animals um, share their homes with each other and they build their homes in their neighborhood or their habitat. But we're gonna start this off today by reading The Very Best Bed by Rebecca Ray. So this is The Very Best Bed by Rebecca Ray. The little gray squirrel was so busy finding nuts and seeds to store away for the winter that he hadn't noticed it was getting cold and dark. He needed to find a cozy bed for the night. There was a nice den nearby under a fallen tree, but it was already very, very full with a big bear. He could, could he find a nest up in the old pine tree? But then he heard the sound of a barred owl. It sounded like, who cooks for you all? The owl was just waking up. Soon he would start hunting in the moonlight. The squirrel jumped up into a great pile of rocks. There was a safe little cave there, but when he peeked inside, he saw a red fox snuggled up with his warm, bushy tail. What if the fox woke up hungry too? Uh-oh. It might be safer up in the tall maple tree. So up he climbed, up, up. A family of bats was hanging upside down from the branches. The squirrel tried it, but it made his head ache. Ouch. With a big jump, the squirrel leaped up into a nearby apple tree. Down below, he saw a trail of nibbled apples. They looked delicious. Two deer rested there. It would be warm to snuggle between them but they woke up and started to move away. Deer only sleep for a few hours at a time. He followed a cottontail rabbit, hop, hop, hopping towards a group of thick young spruce trees. It was heading for a small hollow in the grass, lined with leaves. What a perfect place to sleep. Too bad it was only big enough for one rabbit. Down by the water's edge, the squirrels saw ducks and geese sleeping on rafts and reeds of cattail. The gentle waves rocked them back and forth, but the squirrel didn't want to get his own little feet wet. A ripple of water caught his eye. He watched two seals bobbing upright and a harbored porpoise gently rolling on the surface of the water. It looked like they didn't mind sleeping in the water at all. <laughs> Imagine that. At 
the pond on his way back to the woods, the squirrel saw a beaver slap his flat tail on the water and dive down into his launch in the middle of the pond. But the squirrel certainly did not want to get his fluffy tail wet. A wet tail was just as bad as wet feet. The sky was getting darker, but the squirrel noticed a tiny hole at the base of an oak tree. He peeked inside and saw a chipmunk sleeping on a bed of leaves and grass. There were a lot of seeds nearby in case he woke up hungry. It looked very, very cozy, especially with a snack so handy, but there wasn't quite enough room for a squirrel too. So, the squirrel began to climb higher up in the oak tree. He saw a mama raccoon resting on a branch next to a bigger hole in the tree. But when he looked inside, there was a nest full of raccoon babies. It didn't look like they'd be going to sleep anytime soon. The squirrel kept climbing higher and higher and higher, and there was a shelter under a branch, was an empty woodpecker's nest. As quick as a flash, the squirrel scampered down the tree and gathered some grass and moss and leaves. Then he made the very best bed there ever was. He curled up under his fluffy tail and slept and slept and slept all night long. Do you think the squirrel had the very best bed of all? All right, so after we read the very best bed, and we've seen some examples of different kinds of beds. We're gonna take a look at different beds that we can find in nature. And the first thing we're gonna look at are beds that are built by animals that work together. And a good example of this is a beaver. And so as a family, beavers typically find a nice spot to build a lodge and they look for an area of water that's anywhere between five to six feet deep and they build a lodge by gnawing down trees and so what beavers do is they will find a tree and using their teeth they will gnaw and gnaw and gnaw and gnaw until the tree looks something like this and then they stop and they wait for a big gust of wind to come and push the tree over and once that happens the beavers can then move the trees and because wood floats in water um, they try to get the the wood into the water so then they can float the wood over to where their lodge is now beavers are very unique because they have these teeth these rodent teeth um, and you can see they're a bit curled and they're covered in this enamel that's incredibly strong but beaver teeth continue to grow throughout their life and so they're able to gnaw down these trees um, to both sharpen their teeth and prevent their teeth from overgrowing. And so what a beaver will do is it will build its lodge in the middle of a body of water. And typically the lodge has one room and this room is about three to four feet wide um, and two to three feet high. And so the beaver will build this out of trees and branches that it gnaws out and then it will use mud to cement it down. And the beaver uses its tail to pat down the mud so it can build a safe and stable house for, for the family. Now, another animal that works together to build its home is a rabbit. And rabbits create tunnels into the ground and tunnel systems. And these systems are called warrens. And so I have an example of a rabbit here. This is a snowshoe hare, but rabbit's feet are incredibly good at 
digging. They have long nails and they get in a stance so they spread their hind legs apart and they can shovel out dirt. And they shovel the dirt out and it comes out by where their butt is. Um, but rabbit's feet allow them to be very effective diggers and they usually live in colonies to build to to work to build together to build their warrens um, and then once they have um, their tunnel system they usually fill it with grass and mud and twigs to make a nice comfy bed for them another animal that we're going to talk about a group of animals that work to dig to build their homes um, is we're going to look at the fox and so i have this red fox pelt with me um, this fox fur is very soft, but what the fox will do is the fox will dig a burrow, and the burrow that they dig is usually called a den. And they will dig this den out, and that will provide a cool area for a fox to sleep at night. It will be a safe place for them to store their food and a safe place to have their pups. Um, and a safe place for the pups to grow up as well. Um, and these foxes actually build several different entrances and exits into their dens. And so if something happens, they're able to exit quickly um, so they can escape predators. But this is an example of a fox. And you can see the fox is coming out of one of the exits that it has built um, in its den. So we're going to move on to another category of animals, and this category of animals borrows things that it finds. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is an owl. And so an owl is a secondary cavity nester, which pretty much means it doesn't hollow out its own cavity to build a nest, it just finds one. And so this is a photo of an owl and you can see he's nesting in a cavity of a tree right here. Um, and this is where the owl will build its nest, have its babies, it'll be where the owl sleeps at night. Um, and sometimes in a habitat there aren't enough places for an owl to nest. And if an owl can't find a place to nest, it will leave that habitat. And so one of the ways humans can help is by building nesting boxes for owls to be able to move into um, and have a nice place to live. Another animal that borrows things that it finds is the raccoon. And so I have um, my raccoon pelt here. And you can see um, the little bandit um, bandana on his face. And so this is a raccoon pelt. And raccoons will pretty much just find anywhere they can to live. Um, they typically make their dens in hollow trees um, or abandoned burrows, maybe something that a fox um, left, but they'll live anywhere they can find. And unfortunately, sometimes they will find a place to live in your attic or in the sewers or a barn or maybe even your shed. Right here, I have an example of a raccoon that found a hollow tree that he was able to build his nest in. And he lives there and this is a safe place for him to go. But if you're not careful, sometimes a raccoon might try to live with you. Um, but it's important that um, we treat those animals with respect anyways. So another group of animals we're gonna jump over and look at are animals that um, build their nests with things that they find. And we're gonna look at the bird nest. And so what a bird will do is a bird will find um, pieces of straw or twigs um, or grass and they will weave them together and they will sometimes cement these together with mud. And this creates a stable base for the bird to lay its eggs in. And so they find the supplies that they can use. Sometimes they might use twine that they find. They can even use human hair. Um, but they do this so they can create a safe place to raise their young. Similarly, squirrels tend to build nests too. And a squirrel nest is called a dray, spelled D-R-E-Y. And their drays are made out of dry leaves, twigs, and grass. And squirrels tend to build these in the fork of a tree. 
And so I have a photo of a dre here, and you can see this is the nest, and it fits perfectly in the fork of this tree. And so they usually use the drays in the summer month, and normally it's one squirrel that builds and lives in a dray um, for the season. Um, and believe it or not, squirrels can build one of these drays in one day. They work so quickly and so efficiently. And once they've built the outside of the dray, they usually find moss or leaves or pine needles to line the inside so it's nice and warm and soft um, for the squirrel to live in. And so these are the animal homes that I wanted to share with you today. It's incredible how many different homes exist in nature and especially with the burrows um, and the tunnels underground, you don't even know that they're there and there an, could be an animal living under your feet. Our homes are so important to us and it's so important that animals have safe homes as well. So hopefully, maybe you guys can come down to the property and see if you can spot any of the animal homes that we have here. But thank you for joining me today and I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend.